Hello, Few Candy here, and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines. And we're still here in Oridon. Last time out, we built Lord Eggsy's castle on Eggsy Island. And yeah, built out this kind of European high density historical district area for tourists to come and enjoy. Complete with our custom fountain plaza right in front of the Lord Eggsy's castle there. And all in all, I think it came together OK. We do have a pretty steady stream of people coming in via the ferry. And it is just a completely independent island, which is really, really nice to see. And we did also come in on the live stream and build out yet another fountain plaza because I really enjoyed doing that one on Exe Island. And yeah, right in front of the stadium here, this is what we ended up with. And I think there's quite a lot to still do in this area. We didn't finish this all off on the last stream. So I will keep this area for further streams and we'll come in and tidy this up. I want to do some more detailing around the tram line. Definitely all around this plaza, this little market tailgate type area here. More car parking and yeah, quite a few more props and details in and around the stadium here, I think is needed as well. So we'll come to it on another live stream and fill out the rest of this area. But for today, we are going to concentrate on this little patch of land here around this little inland lake pond area. So it does come out into the main body of water here, but it feels quite sort of segregated. We've got the train lines running across here, the raised highways. There's a few different layers of height going on around here as well. And we do have quite a lot of residential demand. So what we are going to come in and do today is a canal district around this lake. So first things first, what I am going to do is just level out this ground, because at the moment, if we take a look at the height of it, it's pretty high off the edge of this lake. So if we start putting in canals now, and it's also very slopey as well. We're going to get canals with really high sides with low water sitting in it, which is not the type of aesthetic that I really want to have in our canals. I want canals with the water quite close up to the top of the canal walls. So we're just going to grab our terrain terraforming tools right now. We'll do smooth out terrain. So I'm going to just pick a height here and it may need adjusting. We're probably going to get a lot of flooded in this episode. Let's face it. But we'll take this height for now and just see if that is going to be OK. So we're not getting flooding out over onto it, which is good. So, yeah, we'll take this height. And what we'll do is carve out a big platform area all around this lake in which we can start to build out our canal network. And so there we go. So we have completely flat land. And I've just removed all of the trees as well so we can see what we are working with here. So next, I am going to go ahead and draw out our canal network. So I'm actually just going to use the shallow, narrow canals for this, and that will form the basis of what we are going to do here. So to start off with, I'm just going to snap into the road guideline of this road here. And what we're going to do is bring out one really long, straight canal, which will form the start of our canal network there. And with this little lake area, I'd like to keep the edge of it pretty parallel to this key here. So what we will do actually is just a little bit more terraforming to sort this out so that we have just a slightly more parallel base there. And of course, we're going to get tons of flooding in this episode. So that's a little bit better. And we'll come through and tidy this up with keys along the water's edge as well later on. And I'm actually just going to remove this sand for now because we are going to key all around this, around the canals as well. Now, as we lay out this canal network, we do just want to be conscious about the spaces that we're leaving, because what I would like to bring into here is a lot of the green cities, high density residential. Now, our downtown is literally going to sit right here. Yes, we are getting super, super close to the actual downtown. So it's going to sit right about here. So this is going to be a big forefront scene setting area in front of that downtown central business district skyline there so we definitely want a bit of a crawl in height up towards that downtown area so introducing some of the taller much more high density buildings than we have used so far and particularly because we've got the stadium here we can start to introduce that right from the offset so we do want to be conscious when we're adding in our canal network that we're leaving enough space for those buildings and enough space for detailing opportunities, public transit, that sort of thing all around it. 
So we'll turn a full snapping here except for to angle so we make sure we get that nice angle in. And then we can bring out some slightly more interesting patterns into the canal network here. Now at this end, I'm going to leave it relatively plain just for a moment, but I do want a canal entrance that is completely parallel to that side. So we'll just draw it all the way across for now. And then what we will do is just delete out this middle bit under the water. And <laughs> yeah, when the water settles, we'll uh, hopefully have a better looking canal network in there. Now, what I would like to do here is put in one of the unique buildings and I would like to make it stand out because where we're going to have the downtown central business district right behind it, this is going to be quite an important view, I think, particularly as we have the highway, we have the train tracks here, which is all going to come in and see this unique building with the downtown backdrop behind it. So this is a very important view for Oridan. So what I am actually going to do is just grab the level of the terrain here and raise up an area just in the front of the canal here. We're going to do a reasonably large area for now and then we can of course come in and trim it down as necessary. Now all around this canal network I am actually going to use the content creator pack European Stone Bridge Road because it's got really really nice sort of old style cobblestone pavements which i just really like the look of around a canal district and so as this water is uh figuring itself out what i will do is snap this into the road guidelines of the key so that we can make sure we're getting things absolutely parallel to that so we'll just draw in a small piece of road there like so and then what we will do is get the unique building that we're going to use and that is going to be the ziggurat garden and what I would like is it sitting on this raised piece of land right in the middle of this canal entryway there. And then what we'll do is grab the European road again and I'm going to draw a border all the way around this. So just a very simple road border for this building. We can trim off these sides for now. And then what we will do is grab the terraforming tool again and just level this all back out all around this building. So we've just got this literally sitting on a mound in the middle of the canal district now. Now I really want this building to be a very special feature here. And because we've got this pyramid nature to it, what I'm thinking is I'm going to build key steps running all the way up to it. So we are going to use several pieces of key for this. And we're going to use the city key wide in order to do this. So let's again just snap into the road guidelines of our European road there. And we will need to lengthen this out just a little bit, but let's make sure that we're getting to the height of the road. And I'm going to remove that node in the center because it's completely, completely unnecessary and just taking up the node count. So let's go ahead and do that with Network Multi Tool. So now here, if I hold Alt, I will snap to that same angle and we can just grab this node out slightly wider because we want to make sure that these steps are encompassing the whole of the front of this road area. So we'll do exactly the same thing this side. So we're snapping it to there. And then again, let's just make sure our height is in line with that road. And then again, we can use move it to grab those nodes and just bring this in slightly closer to that road. So now what we'll do is with move it, we are going to copy that segment and just place one in in front of it. And then similarly, what we're going to do is grab that with move it and move it right up. So it starts to form the look of a continuous flow of steps right down from the front of that pyramid. So, yeah, this is the type of aesthetic exactly that we're looking for. So what we then want to do again is exactly the same thing. We'll take this bit of key, copy it using move it and just place it into front and move it into place. And there we go. So we have our flow of key stairs up towards the ziggurat garden there which yeah i think i think looks pretty cool i think they're pretty cool it goes with the pyramid aesthetic certainly so then what we'll do is use the canals to hug in close around this ziggurat garden i'm just going to extend it slightly further than we need so we can get it in nice and close just like that so it forms a big continuous loop all the way around the ziggurat gardens now to tidy up these little bits of cliff face here which is clipping just ever so slightly we are going to use more content creator keys in order to do that so for this we are just going to use the simple key wall 
and what we will do is snap it into the road guideline there but then we might want to make sure that we're not snapping it into the node of this key because we'll get curvy ends to it so we'll just do it this far for now and then we're going to have to use move it to get it into place so there we go we've got the keys in all around and aligned the keys at the front here as well and now what I would like to do actually as well, which I forgot to do, is to finish off this canal network. So we are just going to grab our shallow canal as well. And we're just going to continue on this pattern. So we'll make sure we turn snapping on and we'll bring it round in a nice square like so. Now just to finish off these sides as well, I would like to introduce some retaining wool just to tidy up these edges. We'll just put in a very small piece like so and then we can move it into place how we'd like it. I'm going to put that first node at the end here. We can adjust the height in a second and then the second one down this end. And we'll create a kind of wall along the edge of this key here. And the water is still going pretty nuts around there. Now, in terms of road network coming into the Ziggurat Garden, what I would like to do is form a bit of a bridge network, giving us some different layers of height. So we will just bring this out either side and connect it up. So I'm going to have to adjust this junction just a little bit, which is OK. And that's a little bit humpy. So what we will do is just break this road connection here just for a second, and then we will grab it and just move it in exactly to the place that we want. So it lines up with this European road. So yeah, just like that, which will then bring it into the Ziggurat Garden and then take it back out and into the downtown there as well. Just to add to that, I am also going to bring in uh, the four lane European stone bridge into here as well. Now, what we will have to do is come in and break up these keys. <laughs> so I've just deleted out that middle segment, having added in a couple of nodes here. So we should just be able to join this key in without the walls on the front of it and have that fit in nicely there so it's not breaking up the road. And then we'll need to do exactly the same thing in these sides as well. And so yeah, there we have it. So we've got the keys in, it's not crossing any of the roads. The keys are flowing down to the front here. So I think that is all generally working. And we've got people visiting it already, which is lovely to see. So the next thing that I would like to do is put in some invisible paths so that we can get people walking actually down these keys here. So what I would like to do is we will actually start from the bottom here and then run it up to the top here. Now I know this is goes eight meters up, so we will just make that eight meters up like so up to the crossing and hope that people then go down it. So we'll do exactly the same thing this side and then just hit home so that we're bringing it back to a level here. And then we'll go up again eight meters and we'll do one in the middle here. And what I would like to do there is also add in a zebra crossing. So we'll get node controller, we'll add a little node in there and we'll make that a crossing. Now at the front here, what I would like to do is put in some plazas or things that people can actually visit. And I am thinking for this that what I will use is one of the park life paths as road roads so we will just bring that out straight out across the front of this bit of canal here and then we will raise it up into a little bridge to get it across we'll do exactly the same this side now i have no idea why that has uh, opened up the abyss <laughs> i think it's the invisible path has just shrunk down there so what we will do is uh make sure that node is aligned with the height of this one We'll do that all the way along. Because then what I'd like to use in the front is actually the zoo plazas. So if we grab just a couple of these and we'll have to put in the paths to align them nicely in the center. So what we will do is I'll just grab a park life path, which I think goes pretty well with these keys. And obviously the fact that we have got the road out the front here and we'll just add in a couple of segments from those invisible paths like so. And now what we'll do is with move it is we'll just adjust this all up. So these plazas are nicely in the center of these pieces of path here. And we can also now as well just adjust these so that they line up to the bottom of the key and make a little bit more sense there. And then hopefully what we will do and then hopefully what we will see is people starting to walk down the keys and visiting these two little plazas here. 
And we'll come in in the detailing time lapse and flesh this out a little bit with some more detailing there and some more detailing around the top of the keys around the cigarette garden as well. So yeah, there we go. So we're starting to get that aesthetic. And I think these zoo plazas work really well with the ziggurat gar gardens in terms of little trees on them, adding a bit of greenery to the front of that. And then you can imagine the downtown skyline is literally going to loom over the back of this. So it should look pretty cool when it all comes together. So yeah, we'll come in with the detailing time lapse and tidy up that area. Now for the rest of it, I do need to have a little think about road network and also public transport. So with this metro line, what I would like to do here, we have the university absolutely uh, burning down there. But in the meantime, let's do some metro lines. So yeah, what I would like to do with this one is actually bring it in a lot closer to the edge of this road and actually follow this road round rather than being out in the middle there, which just gives us a little bit more space to play with uh, for the green cities area. I'll just hook that in like that for now. And then I will just bring this out at a fairly sharp angle there so yeah there we go so that is now coming in really nice and close up against this road here and up against the cycle highway as well as that will float on down into the downtown as well now i would then like to bring the metro line down and into this area but just before we do that i do want to line the front with keys as well so i'm going to go ahead and put in some even more keys just around the edge of this lake here and so there we go. So let's now get the metro in. So we'll just have the metro running all the way along the front of the key, like so. We'll make sure we're snapping to the angle, which we are. And we'll just bring this straight across and continue to flow it down onto the edge of this key here. I would like it to flow along this edge under this archway here and then come across the canal there and so what we'll need to do is just a slight slight curve just to get ourselves to connect between these two parts so something like that and then obviously we need to sort out the height of this what we will have in here is two separate metro stations so i'm just going to break off this section here actually so that we can add in this metro station and what we do need for it is obviously a piece of road so let's just go ahead and plop in just a regular two lane road will do for now. Then we'll get in our metro station to pop it up against there. And then what I would look like to do is just move this back so it is right up against the back of the keys there so that the metro line can essentially just flow straight into it from our connections here, just like that. So people should be able to connect and walk along the key and get into the back of this metro station up here. And then what I would like to do is have exactly the same thing over this side as well. We can just connect that up so the tunnel almost looks like it is actually on that road. And I'm just going to have a little play around with the nodes of the road to see if we can just get that slightly more centre aligned. We've got the tunnel of the metro station goes right into the tunnel of the road like that, which, yeah, I like that aesthetic. And we should have enough crit clearance, I think, for the metro trains there. We'll find out. We'll soon find out. And of course, with this line, what we can do is then continue that on and it will head on into the downtown. So we'll just leave the end of it like that to remind ourselves for now. But then, of course, what we do want to do is connect it back up to this station here. So we'll start to bring this around like so and then start to raise up. OK, so now we've got the metro network sorted through here. I would just like to go ahead and lay out our road network. So I'll do that in a little time lapse and be right back.
And then we go, so we have got our road network now in alongside our metro. So we've got public transport and roads. And so I would like to hook up the metro now. So just having a look at lines for it. So we do have the Williams Memorial Park line, which comes in and stops at this station at the moment. And then we have one that runs from Bear to Market all the way up to Solitude Port. So what I would like to do, I think, is extend on this line here. So what we will do is just grab this end station and bring that all the way out to our new end stop. And then we can go through and add in stops at each of these two stations on the way. So we've got different platforms for each of those two metro lines. So that should work OK, I think. And then they've got an interchange, obviously, at that station there. So let's just have a little follow of this to make sure that it does go under that bridge at the other end. Which it does. There's plenty of clearance, so that is all fine there. So yeah, we've got our metro line in, so hopefully that will help to bring people in now. So now in amongst all of these canal networks, what I do want to do is bring in some green cities, high density residential. We've got huge residential demand, so let's let's match it. Now these are some of the nicest. Well, they are definitely the nicest high density residential that you can find in the game. Some of them are actually pretty large. And I do want to have a couple of smaller clusters of these much larger buildings in here, because obviously with our downtown being here, we need to build up layers of height towards it. So some of these, I think, will work quite well. Right up next to the cigarette pyramid, just in very, very small clusters. And we also want to be really careful of the orientation of these and making sure that they look decent from all angles. And we definitely don't want to overcrowd the cigarette garden. That's an important feature of this area. So we want to make sure that that is respected. So I'm thinking just having three buildings like that is absolutely plenty. And again, just thinking about orientation here, I would just like to spin. I think we'll spin this one round and put it diagonally in the middle of that block there. Just so it adds a little bit of variation to that skyline there. We don't want everything at perfect right angles to each other. That's what we'd like to avoid here. And then what we can do from this point is start to step down the layers of height. And we won't do it too fast. So we'll have a, a gradual step down. And what we can do is use move it just to move them into the positions that we would like. So we're getting the orientation and the flow. Now, we obviously do need to introduce parking here as well. So we need to we need to be a little bit conscious about leaving enough space for parking there. Now, we need to be conscious of the metro station with noise here as well. If we just check, you see it is pretty noisy around that metro station. So people are not going to want to live in this middle plaza here. So I think what we will do in there actually is bring out potentially another plaza. And we do have the official park that we are yet to use, which I think would look quite nice in here. It's super modern like the Green City's buildings and the Ziggurat Garden. So I think if we bring that out into the centre of this plaza, we can do a little bit of detailing around this to make this nice. But just before we do that, let's have a little think about the buildings that we want in around it. And I'm not sure, it is a little bit noisy, but I think we'll get away with being able to put some high density in and around it. Yeah, I think one slightly taller one here would look nice. And with the curve in this, what we can do is actually bring it out onto this corner which I think will fit nicely with the curve of the road there as well. And then we've got space for just one more asset. We can have a slightly lower one, I feel, in the middle here. And actually what we can do with these two is do a little bit of a merging. So let's bring these together like so. And what that gives us is a really nice curve on the back of the building here. And obviously what we want to make sure is that the buildings are the same colour. So we will just reset this. And I think we will have them both as the creamy white colour there. But yeah, we get this really nice curve on the back of the building by merging these two like this. And it works well from the front point of view in terms of the front entrance, etc. too. We do just have the bins there, which I'm not a huge fan of. But what we can do 
is come in with a little bit of fence and just cover that up. So turn it into an actual proper bin area by, yeah, just adding in just a tiny bit of this to shelter it from the main road. And there'd still be enough space for the residents to just walk in there and deliver their rubbish to that area. And then that just makes it look quite a lot nicer. So I think what we'll do here is we'll do a three of these same type of buildings and we'll just align them nicely so that those curves sit really nicely together. And we can make it into a little bit of a, a triplet of these style of buildings here. And then just in between it, we can as well bring out some car parking detailing. So let's grab our car parking lot roads as always. And we'll take off road guidelines for this so that we can snap it nicely. We'll just have the angle there. We'll bring it all around the buildings just like that. We could as well actually just bring in a slight smaller extra bit here, which can just sit up against the back of this building. So we can pull that out just a little bit. And of course, make sure that that is connected up to the node there. And then these are essentially the rich posh apartments that are sitting next to the ziggurat there. And again, yeah, I do just want to make sure that these are all coming in at a similar colour so it looks like they are meant to be. We can go around on the detailing time lapse and bob off those car parking spaces just to make that look a little bit nicer. And of course, add in detailing all around the housing. So I think over this side, what we will do is just introduce a small amount of commercial here. And because of the noise that high density commercial generates, I think I am just going to stick to low for this, but try and look at some of the larger, lower density buildings. So the slightly taller ones, such as this one, which we can do a couple of, and also this one as well, again, which we can put in a couple of and merge them in. So, so with this one, I am just going to merge it right into the other building. So we get a slightly different shape to what we had before and the backs merge okay it's not too bad obviously let's make sure that they are the same color so we'll take that blue color there and then yeah it just gives us a slightly different shop front there and I think what we actually will do instead of putting in this different type of building is continue this pattern on so let's just copy those two and then we can just bring this out we'll make it close so it is a terrace but then yeah We'll add these two in the end. So we get this kind of continuous shop front flow there, which is reasonably bulky and reasonably high density, but won't have the noise pollution that that high density commercial has. Now, coming back to this plaza, I think firstly, what I will do is just use no, no controller here to add in a crossing. And actually, we will do it both sides to get a nice bit of symmetry there. And then what I'd like to do is extend this plaza out a little bit. So first up, let's use Bob on those trees because they are just the boring vanilla variant. So I think actually what we will do there is change them to the content creator street trees and potentially the large ones. Actually, I think those, the silver maple street tree is probably a better option there. So let's go for that. And that just helps to give a slightly different look to this plaza. A slightly better look, I think. Now what I am actually going to do here as well is change up this tiling to this cobblestone, which I think goes really well with the edge of the European roads that we're using here from the content creator pack. So within Bob, what I will do is go to the high tiles and I'm going to convert those to the cobblestones. So just like that. And then what I will do either side is extend this pattern out. And there we go. So yeah, it's just filled in that area quite nicely. And I think what we will do as well is copy some of those benches around so that we get them on the outside as well as on that inside bit there too. We're just grabbing the same bench that has been used in there. And then what we can do is just place a couple of these around the outside so that it doesn't look quite so separated from the rest of the plaza. So again, we will come back through in a detailing time lapse and fill in some of these other gaps that are forming around here and make sure that all of that is detailed up. So before we start placing too much of the residential, we do also want to have a little think about services here as well. And I would like to do a little services, but I'm thinking around this metro station, which is relatively central and also because the noise around here is pretty high as per the other metro station as well. So we can't build too much residential in the immediate vicinity of this. So I'm thinking we can do a little row of service buildings along here. 
So we definitely kind of want fire in here. And I'm thinking as well, because of the size of it, the vanilla fire station fits in pretty nicely here alongside the vanilla police station as well. But what I am now thinking with this as well is I would quite like to bob off these car parking spaces and then we could possibly move in the service buildings a little bit closer to the front of this metro, which might look quite good. So let's just go to Bob and remove those car parking spaces. And as well, actually, I think I will remove those hedges too. Yeah, these ones. Just so we get a clean, a clean slate either side there. So now we've got big open spaces that we can work with either side. So what I will do is then grab the fire station here and just move it right in. So it's right up next to this metro station, which I think can just help to fill in this area a little bit more. So we've just got the front of the metro station like that. But what I would like to do is get some planters just to divide off this little car park area in front of the fire station there. So let's go into Finder and find our planters. And we could actually use one of the networks here for that. Make sure we've got anarchy in there. But yeah, that would look quite nice actually, just blocking off the end of that car park. Let me just grab that node. We can extend it right up actually. And yeah, I think that works for the edge of the metro station there. And then I think we can actually use the same planter this side as well, just to form an edge on this side. And we'll include the bike stands within this. We've got a little bike stand for anyone that is cycling down to the metro station there. Then we can also grab our police station and move that right up in. And I think I will actually move it right alongside this fire station as well. Just so we're maximising the use of the space here and also helping to make it feel a little bit more built in along this metro station edge. I would also like to add medical as well, so we'll go ahead and pop in a medical clinic here on the end. Now we do also want child health care and elder care in here as well. Now the elder care is a reasonably large building, but because it's also quite low, I'm thinking what I will do is keep it over this side. So it could fit quite nicely into this little space here. It's just pushing out a little bit on the keys there. That may not work. If we try it the other side, we can see what this looks like over this side. Yeah, which is better, and I like that, the way the tile's back onto the keys there. So I think, yeah, we'll leave the elder care this side, although those trees are slightly on the pavement, so let's just make sure that they are off the pavement. And does that cause us any issues here? No, it doesn't, so that'll be absolutely fine there. And then the child health care clinic as well. So I'm thinking what we will do is add that in with a school over here, which we'll do in next to this metro station. So I think what we will do is have the child healthcare clinic on this corner with the hedge backing onto that road like that. We just pull this car park back ever so slightly then what we can do is I think we'll just use one of the one of the pavement roads here just to bring that out and connect that. Yeah it can connect into the car park I'm not too fussed about that. That just brings a front end to the child healthcare clinic there. And then we can also add in some schools around here as well. So we'll add in an elementary school. And actually, I'm thinking I will use the Green Cities Community School for this area. And we will just put that onto the edge of this car park like so. And our detailing opportunities are going to be minimal around this one. Uh, we're not going to be able to do too much with the front, but I will hedge that off just so that we haven't got a playground sitting right out on the car park there, because that just doesn't make sense to me. So just like that. And then out the back, we can continue this head on out. So we will do more of this in the detailing time lapse. Now, I do also want to get in a high school in here as well. And because it's a little bit taller, I don't mind it actually being further over this side. So I'm thinking what we will do is bring it out into its own area here. But what I'm actually going to do is just break this road. We don't need this road in now. So we can bring in the high school here. And what I am going to do is bring a car park out in front of it. So I think we'll just grab the slightly larger car park as this is a high school. And I feel like parking would be, would be needed here. I think actually we'll move the high school over to this side. So it is there. And then we can start adding in some of the other classic buildings that just pair really, really well with the high school. So definitely the sports hall and gymnasium there. And I don't really mind keeping those car parking spaces on there, I don't think. 
And then I also think actually, because it fits so nicely into this space, we will also add a community swimming pool into here as well, just to extend out this high school area. In fact, what I think we'll do is we'll actually move the sports hall up to this side and just make sure none of those trees are on the track there. I kind of don't mind vanilla trees too much on this. They're small enough, but I think they'll be OK. And then in this side, we do have a little bit of room to add in some sports courts. So I'm thinking a couple of basketball courts wouldn't go amiss here. So we could use the Park Life ones for this if they will fit, which they will actually. So we could have a tennis court and a basketball court in here. We'll just move that up to there and then see if we can add in a basketball court as well. Yeah, which we can. So we can get two of those sports courts in there. And actually what I will do is swap those over, I think. I think the tennis one with the higher fence would look better up against the metro, metro line there. And then the basketball court is a little bit more open around it. And then, of course, what we can come in and do is a little bit of surface painter just to touch up some of these gaps there. So, yeah, there we go. So I think that will do. And this is glitching out massively. So what I am going to do is use no controller here to remove the markings on some of these crossings. And actually, we don't want it on that one. We'll have it on this one. Remove the markings there so we don't get all of these numerous zebra crossings happening. And actually, what I will do is just turn it back on that one so we do get the one across there. And around the back of the school, there's a few more detailing opportunities that we can do here. So I think what we will do is add in some benches uh, for this area, like some long kind of school benches, just to flesh that out a little bit. And then what we can do as well, I think, is have just a couple of planters to add some trees in and give the area a little bit of height and a little bit of greenery, make it a little bit of a nicer environment to learn in. And so there we go. So we have our high school complex there, which I think is fitted in reasonably well to that little corner there. So now what I will do is go through and place some of the green cities. So now what I will do is go out and fill out the rest of this area with our green cities high density residential. <laughs>
And so there we go. So that is quite a lot of high density residential in here. But I have tried to put in some interesting patterns. So if we have a little look around a few different areas. So here what I've done is tried to follow that curve in the key with these different two layers of heights of uh, different buildings here, which covers up the view of the highway in the background there. But also when you're coming along the highway, I would add, this is a uh, quite a nice view as we start to get down into this area. So you can just about peek through and see the little lake there with the metro on the other side, but you can also see these different buildings and occasional pop in height, but lots of varying layers of height and enough space in between it that it still feels reasonably open and not just packed in. So that's what we've done here is this curvy pattern. We've got a few of these all put together into this circular pattern as well. A couple of those dotted around the place. Here as well, we've done this repeated pattern of these little blocks of three. And actually, these buildings are a block of a one by two and a one by one put together so that we get these balconies at the front, but also get a nice view at on the roadside as well. So otherwise, you kind of get plain backings of some of these buildings, a bit like you can see here, which I don't mind up against the metro there, but against the waterfront, we definitely don't want that. So that's why I've combined those two buildings together in this repeated pattern along the waterfront there. I've then also done a large complex of these type of buildings. So there's a few different versions of these and various heights. And when you merge them together like this, it does form quite a nice little slightly different shaped asset to the norm. So they merge together pretty well with all the hedges and the different angles of the building like that. So we have repeated this all over. Some of them with the same height of building, a couple of different layers of height in there as well. But huge, huge complexes with these car parks running through it. And clearly we've got to come in and do an awful lot of detailing around these as well. And then we have the Metro Plaza again with those repeated patterns. And up along this side, I have tried to keep it so that we've got variations in height and different types of assets, but a lot of repeated pattern as well. So it doesn't look all too mishmashed in the assets that you have. And then when you come in here through the ziggurat garden, you've got some of these much taller buildings because we'll be much closer to the downtown at this end. So the height is slowly working its way up towards this end, although we have still got these little pops over here by the stadium, which I think was needed just to kind of frame off the start of this area. So now there is an awful lot of detailing to do. We'll add in more parks dotted around as well to keep people happy because at the moment the park coverage isn't... Oh, well, actually, it's not too bad. <laughs> Not too bad considering, but we yeah we definitely want to put some more parks in here to keep those residents happy. But just before I do that, I do want to add a shuttle bus route all the way around here. And I had considered putting in trolley buses or bringing the trams down into here, but I really want to keep using these content creator pack European roads, these pavements here. I just feel like it's a really nice aesthetic around these canal fronts. So we aren't going to put in tram or trolley bus. We are just going to do a really basic bus route around this whole area. So let's come in and put in our bus line. So I am just going to start down at this end and I'm just going to plop one in right here, actually, which can serve these houses here. And then we're going to essentially follow this round in a bit of a loop. So we'll put another one on this little island there. And then we'll drop one in on this bit of road here, which will serve these condos. And similarly, I think we'll add in a second one here because there is a lot of residents sitting over that side that will want to get across. Now we're going to come back and loop around this end. So what I'm thinking is I will actually continue it on down this way and we'll have another bus stop just here before this junction. And then we are going to come down and stop here to serve people from the metro station. So this will take them round this loop and back to their residences. Now we do have the school here, but I'm hoping that bus stop there is close enough that it can serve that school. And then if we come over this way, clearly we want one right by the high school. So we'll stop here. So now in this bit, I am going to bring it in and round past this metro station, a little bit of a loop there. But then we are going to loop back up round over this bridge to the outside of the ziggurat garden. So in fact, we could have another stop here just before we do that. And then we'll stop right in front of the ziggurat to serve that area. And then we'll come on down here. And again, we'll just do a loop down this end to finish it off. Then what we'll do is we'll trace this bus route back 
And I think here what we'll do is stop in a slightly different place. So we've got different bus stops there for each direction that the residents are going. So again, yeah, we'll just follow this loop back. Stop at this metro station. They won't need to go to and from, but it's just picking them up to shuttle them around the other areas as they should so wish. So yeah, here where we're stopping by the metro here, I think we will just bring this out right in front of the metro. And yeah, they, they won't need to go metro to metro, but it's really for serving the residences as they go round. And then we'll have a stop here, which will hopefully serve the school there. And we're going to loop it round. So we'll have one more stop there and then join back up. So we do have this rather large loop at the end of it, but hopefully that should work well. If they need to go in the opposite direction, they can transfer there. So just looking at the type of buses, oh, spawned a school bus almost immediately. I definitely don't want that one. And I'm going to do it as a dark green because it's the green cities area. High density as well, so that will match it. So let's call it Canal Line until we come up with a name for the district. Please do drop that in the comments. Let me know your suggestions for this Green Cities Canal District name. And then so if we go back to the types of buses that we want, I think we just go for a simple double decker and then the regular bus for this route. So we could hit play and see how that goes. We have got people waiting as already. So we've got quite a few people waiting at this stop here. Yeah, because that's reasonably far away from these metro stations for getting them around. So yeah, that should get them to the metro station. They'll be able to transfer out elsewhere. So now that we have done that, I think that really does just leave a little bit of detailing. So I'm going to keep this as a bit of green belt here. Uh, I think some little untouched unmaintained spaces are needed throughout the city to break up that monotony of the building and the grey. So that is what we're going to leave this space as, is a little bit of overgrown green belts. We'll detail up that. We'll do lots of detailing in amongst these condos, so we need to come in with surface painter, probably a few more car parks here to decorate it out, certainly some parks, some playgrounds, that kind of detailing. Lots of foliage, keep it nice and green. But that is really what is needed all the way around. And we've got these sort of high places here. I may put in a little bit of keys around the front of some of these just to get rid of those cliff textures. And we can do the keys with the stairs down so they could tear the keys down and walk along the waterfront there. So I will jump into a detailing time lapse and be right back.
we go. So that was an awful lot of detailing. This area is actually pretty, pretty big. Um, but we have gone round and yeah, added in little plaza details, filled all the gaps, lots and lots of the live oak trees. That's what I've kind of used as the theme around here. And yeah, lined up the keys in the buildings essentially with live oaks all the way around. We have used some of this fence prop as well in various different places around this end of the area. But yeah, as you can see, the live oaks lining essentially absolutely everything. I've added a couple of offices here, actually, just to fill in these gaps. And these bus lines are getting some serious use. So I'm going to have to have a look at that and potentially adjust things, have some bigger buses. We might have the bendy buses around this area, which would probably look OK. But yeah, we've come in and added a few more car parks, lots and lots of trees, lots of detailing everywhere. And yeah, a few more parks dotted in as well. And again, you can see here, the bus lines are just absolutely rammed. There's so many people waiting for them. There's so many people using the Metro as well. And if we just take a look at that, we've got 276 last week. See the people flooding out and straight onto the bus line as well. So it's good that they're not using cars, but it does mean our bus traffic is, yeah, pretty bad. I mean, let's just take a little look at that bus line. And we've got the canal line and yeah, we've got, in fact, actually, it's not. Oh, no, there are hundreds of people waiting. <laughs> yeah, there are actually hundreds of people waiting. I don't know why we've got a mini bus in there, but we can definitely get rid of that. So I think for now, what I will do is just add a couple more vehicles onto it to help relieve that congestion. And I think what we'll do is change it all up to the double decker buses as well. So we've got bigger capacity. So let's see how that goes when they all spawn back out. But yeah, lots of people waiting at all of the stops. And I'm loving this bendy curve here with the layers of height and these little round combination builds down this end. Yeah, I think it has all come together quite nicely overall. It is a big space. Then, of course, we've got our green belt in here as well, which I have added a few rocks into. But there we go. So, yeah, that is our canal district leading up to where our downtown is going to be so yeah we've got an awful lot of residents we've actually climbed about 10,000 residents in the course of this episode so that population is certainly building up that should help our university as well and yeah gradually getting there we're almost at the downtown we're almost at the downtown and I did also in the detailing come in and put coloured lights all around the cigarettes so Stay tuned for the cinematics at the end because there's some going to be some seriously lovely nighttime shots. But for today, that is going to be it. And this was an awfully long episode to film. I think the longest so far, just because of the sheer size of the area and working with keys, which can always be problematic in some senses. So if you have enjoyed the episode, a like below is really, really appreciated. And let me know any suggestions for the name for this district in the comments as well. And we will name it on a future episode. But that is all from me today, so I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.